Welcome back to the SP5 Confocal Microscopy Series. My name is Jamie Hayden, and in this video we'll be taking a look at the initial preparations for placing your slide on the stage, finding an area of interest, and sending it over to the confocal. You can't actually look at the laser light coming out of the confocal, so to begin with we have to take a look through the microscope in a more traditional way. So first, you'll want to decide which objective to use. The most common one is the 63X, so we'll be using that for this demonstration. But just because that's the one that you want to use, doesn't mean that that's the way it's set up right now. So the first thing to do is check and see what's in there. To see what lens is selected, take a look at the LCD panel on the front of the scope. Here it shows you what lens is in place. If a different one is needed, you will need to go into the software to change it. As you can see, it is currently set for the 10X, which is a dry or non-immersion type lens. So to change it to the 63X, we'll have to change that in the software, which you've already started. You'll need to find the tiny little letters right here in the middle of the screen that say Objective 10X. If you click on that, it'll show you what objectives we have on hand. Which objectives you can use depends partly on the magnification you're interested in and partly on how your cells are prepared. If you want to look through the higher magnification objectives, you'll be using oil, and that means you have to be looking through cover slips. If you have a regular histology slide with a number one and a half cover slip on top, you'll be fine. If you have cells growing in dishes, we recommend the 35 millimeter glass bottom dishes from MaTeX and companies like that. All of the objectives have a limited working distance. That's the distance between the top of the objective and the bottom of your sample. And the higher the magnification, the smaller that distance is. Regular culture dishes all have plastic that's too thick. So let's review the objectives that we have and what they can do for us. First, the 10x objective is our lowest magnification. It has a very long working distance and is perfectly fine to use on just about anything, thick plastic or thin glass. When we use it, it is mostly for large subjects, like this esophageal cancer spheroid. It is especially useful for extra thick subjects. As I mentioned in our first video, we have the condenser stock tilted back to avoid any interference with the stage initialization. This gives us access to the stage. When you look down through the plastic chamber into the confocal, you can see that the 10X looks like this. It is a bit small and recessed down a bit. Back in the software, you can see that we have two different 20X objectives listed. They are both dry lenses, but one has a very short working distance and the other has a longer one. How can you tell the difference? Take a look at the other number listed next to each objective. This other number is the numerical aperture, or NA, of the objective. This is a measure of the resolving power of the lens and is actually a more important number than the magnification itself. We always want to use an objective with the highest NA possible because that's going to give us the highest resolution and the highest resolving power. The higher the NA, the more detail we'll be able to see. This 20X has an NA of 0.4 and the other is 0.7, so we want to use the 0.7 if we can. If you have a slide or a cover slip bottom dish, the higher NA objective will work nicely. Let's click on the 20X.7 objective and the lens will automatically flip into place over in the microscope. The 20X.7 NA looks like this. It's a bit larger than the 10X and extends further up. You can also see the green band along the bottom. Back in the objectives list, the 20X.4 NA lens is designed for long working distances. We don't use it often, but if you click on it, it also rotates into place. The 20X.4 looks like this. You can see that it is flat on top and sits deep inside. That's the 10X with the yellow band behind it. Let's take a look at the next lens on the list. This is the 40X 1.3 NA oil objective. The numerical aperture depends on the refractive index of the material that the light is traveling through, with air being the default and a refractive index of 1. So any objective that we see that has an NA less than 1 has got to be a dry lens. Anything that's got an NA higher than 1 is some sort of an immersion. 
If we have immersion objectives on our microscope, we have to be very careful that we don't get some of that fluid onto the dry lenses. If we do, we'll have to clean off those objectives before we can use it, because if you have oil or water or glycerin on a dry lens, it's just going to make everything blurry. The confocal knows this, so when we click on the 40x oil lens, we are switching between a dry objective and an immersion one. The software now pauses and asks if we really want to do that. Just click on yes and the lens will rotate. Looking from the side, notice that when the scope switches between objectives, the lens retracts, rotates to the new one, and then returns back to the Z position it was at when it started. This is helpful when going from one oil lens to another, like the 40 to the 63X. Back on the front panel, you can see that it now shows us that this is an immersion lens. Back on our list, notice that we also have a 40X 1.1 NA water objective. This is a special lens that you would rarely use. However, make sure that you do not accidentally select this one and put oil on it. It is not corrected for oil, and your images will look terrible. Plus, we will have to clean off all that oil. I should mention that we don't want you to try to clean any of these objectives yourselves. If you think there's a problem, please let us know and we'll take care of it for you. The most you'll ever do is just wipe off any excess oil at the end of the day. Don't do anything more than that. When you do, you'll only be using lens cleaning paper or lens tissue. Never, never, never use Kim wipes on any optical surface on a microscope. You can permanently scratch the objectives. So, making sure we selected the 40X oil objective, it looks like this inside the scope. It's a bit taller, flatter across the top, and there may be a skim of oil as well. As I have already mentioned though, we want to use the 63X objective. This has an NA of 1.4 so it has the highest resolution of all our objectives. Being a 1.4 NA lens, it is also an oil immersion lens. I'm often asked why we don't have a 100x oil objective for this microscope, and the fact is we do. It's just not as good as our 63. The 63x and the 100x both have a numerical aperture of 1.4, so they both have the same resolving power, and they can both see the same level of detail. The 63, however, gives us some advantages with confocal. With confocal, you're actually getting to your total magnification with zooming, and so you can start with a lower 63x and see a bigger field of view this way, more cells in there, and then zoom into your final size. We'll be talking a little bit more about this when we get to the video on the software looking at the image acquisition parameters. So, back to the task at hand. We want the 63x, so let's click on that and see what it looks like in the scope. Here is the 63x objective in place. It looks a lot like the 40x, but it's a little thinner. Now there's one last thing that you must do before you put a slide on the stage. All of these high magnification objectives have a collar that retracts and locks in place. If it's stuck this way, your lens won't come up high enough to focus. So you have to make sure that you've extended that collar all the way. Let me show you what I mean with this objective right here. If you first push down on the edge with one finger, you can see that it pops back up again. But if you push down and turn it about one-eighth of a turn to the right, which is clockwise, it stays down. If you push on the edge again, it looks like it's stuck there. Then if you push down and turn it counterclockwise back the other way, it pops back up. You will need to check the actual lens on the scope and make sure that it's in this popped up position. If you started with the objective a little off center, use the XYZ controller, click the course button, and move the stage so that the objective is right in the middle of the opening. Look on the right side of the microscope and locate the three buttons towards the front again. Push the top button. This will bring the objective up to the zero set point. Now, reach in and push down on the edge of the lens with one finger. Do not touch the glass part in the middle. When you're in here, do not put too much pressure on the stage. It will damage the fine electronics inside. Now, if the collar pops back up, you're good to go. 
If it does not, then grasp the top sides of the objective with two fingers only, push it down a little bit, and turn it to the left or counterclockwise. It's a bit tight in there, so be careful. It should pop back up. The last thing to do here is to lower the lens to the bottom position again. So, back at the three buttons on the right side of the scope, push and hold the bottom one to bring the lens all the way down. Remember to never click on the middle button, as that can change and reset the zero position. So now that we have the lens that you want and it's ready to use, let's turn our attention to your sample. You will want to make sure that your slide is clean. We have ethanol, lens tissue, and cotton swabs over here on the counter. Take a fresh cotton swab, dip it in the ethanol, and shake off the excess. Using a circular motion, start in the middle and work out toward the edges. For fluorescence, you only have to clean the cover slip. There will be no light going through the thicker back that we want to see anyway. Repeat this process a few times with fresh swabs until the glass is clear. Tilt it toward the room light. If it looks hazy, use a fresh swab to do it again. Do not reuse the swabs because you'll just wind up smearing whatever oil it collected back onto the slide again. Try to avoid getting close to the edges of the cover slip as you can wick ethanol underneath or draw out the mounting media and smear that around. So if you grew cells on cover slips and then stained and mounted them for confocal, you may find there's a haze on there that doesn't come off with the ethanol. That's because it's probably crystallized salts from the PBS from when you grew your cells. Ethanol doesn't touch that. So we have some DI water over here to the side that you can use instead. After cleaning, reach inside the chamber and take out the bottle of oil. Hold your slide in two fingers and put the bottle of oil in your palm. This will give you a little bit more control when you put the drop on. Dip the rod into the oil and touch it to the inside of the bottle to draw off any excess. You don't want to use too much. Touch it to the cover slip and let a small amount flow off the rod and onto the slide. Do not dab it. That will create air bubbles. If you have air bubbles, you will have to clean off all the oil and start all over again. When you are done, Take the bottle of oil and put it back inside the chamber in the plastic dish or on some paper towels. Do not place it on the counter or any place else. You're going to get oil all over the place. If you do, though, you can clean it up with ethanol and some paper towels or even some Kim wipes. Now take the slide and turn it upside down so that the drop is hanging. Put your whole hand through the flap, being careful not to wipe off the oil. Gently place the slide onto the stage. Gently lift the spring clips if you need to with your fingernail and slide them off to the side. Do not put them all the way over because it stretches them out and they don't hold the slide down as tightly anymore. Move the clips back over the edges of the slide. Make sure the slide rests in the recessed part of the holder pushed up against the back like this. You want to make sure it lays flat. While you look down through the top of the chamber, use the XY controls on the salt and pepper shaker to line up the drop of oil with the lens. So you're going to be raising the objective until it just touches the oil on the bottom of the cover slip. This is set as the zero position on the stage. In order to get there, you push the top button of the three over here on the side. When you do that, make sure that you're looking through the chamber and watching that objective come up. Sometimes the zero position gets reset accidentally, and when that happens, the objective could start pushing up into your slide. If that happens, you want to make sure nothing gets broken, so let the button go. So, having given that disclaimer, look for the three buttons on the right side of the microscope again. Push and hold the top button. This will bring the objective up to the zero position. Make sure to watch the slide while you do this. The lens will come up and touch the oil and stop right there. You can actually see it touch the oil and spread a little bit. You can see in the LCD on the front that it now shows the position as zero. At this point, the only way to raise the objective higher is by using the Z-focus knob on the salt and pepper shaker. As you go higher, up into the plus Z range, the lens will be pushing upwards. If you stop at a higher position but want to get back to the zero, all you have to do is push that top button again. Remember, it brings you back to the zero position always, whether you're above or below. 
Now that we have a slide on the stage, it's time to look for something to image. We'll be looking through the eyepieces here. It's a little difficult with the plastic, but don't worry about it. You just have to see if there's something there and if it's close to focus. We'll be able to fine tune it when we see it on the monitor. In the meantime, let's take the condenser stock and bring it forward. Be careful not to pinch your fingers in here. And then we'll look down in front. Looking at the front of the microscope, you'll see the buttons make a happy little face, including eyes, nose, and teeth. Nobody likes to be poked in the eyes, and this scope is no exception. Don't poke the eye buttons, or you will lose the image. The teeth are the different filter cubes. We have the basics. DAPI is in the middle position on the right. GFP, or Alexa 488, or Fitzy, or something green, is the one to the far left. RFP, or Mitre Tracker Red, or Alexa 594, or any of the red colored dyes you would see in this cube, which is also on the left side. These filter cubes are very broadband, and they let through a lot of overlapping wavelengths of light. Their only purpose is to help you find something and focus on it, make sure that it's there. Don't make the mistake of looking through here and trying to see if your experiment worked or not. That's what the confocal is for. To see something, you first must pick a tooth, and then punch him in the nose to open the fluorescent light. Remember, this is not the laser light. This is the light from the external box that has the remote control button. As you can see, after we punch him in the nose, the shutter opens and the excitation light goes into the chamber. If you see blue light in there, it means the GFP filter is in. If we put in the RFP filter, you're going to see green excitation light. If you have the DAPI filter in, that uses ultraviolet, so you're really not going to see anything. But don't try to look too close, that's not good for your eyes. It could also be that you have no light at all. So make sure that you turned on the light source in the first place, and that the aperture knob is open to a few clicks. At this point, you may want to reduce the overhead light so that it's not too bright to see the fluorescence in here. We almost always start with DAPI because DAPI is almost on every slide and it almost always works. Punch them in the nose to open the shutter and look through the oculars. If you see any blue light, even if it's out of focus, push on the find button and adjust the Z knob. Move it in the direction that makes everything brighter. If you don't see anything at first, try moving the X and Y around. Sometimes if it's a little out of focus, that makes it easier to find. After you have focused on the nuclei, you can push the other filter cube teeth to look in the other channels. Once you have something in focus, take a look at the Z position on the front panel. If it is more than 100 microns away in either plus or minus direction, something is wrong. Usually the slide isn't set in completely flat. You will have to lower the lens, check the slide, and then find your image again. Just use the XYZ controls until you find something of interest. Once you found it, just punch them in the nose, close the shutter, and we're ready to go over to the confocal. So that's the basics for getting your sample ready. Remember, we were just looking at a slide in here, but if you happen to have something in a dish or some other container, we have other options, so please talk to us first. The next step is going to be to take a look at the software. We have other videos for that. The next video is going to be on setting the acquisition parameters.